we started our calculus course with a couple of problems. One of the problems was the tangent line problem. And now we have enough tools to solve that problem. The idea was we're given a curve, which is not a straight line, and we choose a point on the curve, and we would like to know at what rate is y changing with respect to x at that point on the curve. This would be like the idea of the slope of a line. And we said that we could get an approximation by choosing another point, which was close to our given point. Imagine drawing a line through it, or we could actually physically draw the line through it, and then calculate its slope. This line we call the secant line, and we found the slope of the secant line by this difference quotient, f of x minus f of 1 half all over x minus 1 half. Of course, we want to choose x close to half to get a good approximation. If we want a better approximation, choose x even closer to 1 half. If we want the best approximation, meaning the exact value, we need to take x arbitrarily close to 1 half. And now we have a technique to mathematically precisely take x arbitrarily close to 1 half. That is, we take the limit as x approaches 1 half of f of x minus f of 1 half all over x minus 1 half. So in our original example, we were looking at the function f of x equals 3 halves minus x to the power of 4. Now I'm going to have to do quite a bit of algebra, and so I'm going to note that I want the limit, but before I take the limit, I'm going to write out this difference quotient and simplify it as much as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do after replacing f of x with the formula for f of x and f of 1 half with the value 23 over 16 is I'm going to clear the fractions by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 16. After I clear the fractions, I'm going to go ahead and collect the like terms, and I'm going to start to factor. I can see right away that the denominator has a common factor of 8. Now, in the numerator, I'm looking ahead. In the numerator, I had 1 minus 16x to the power of 4. I'm hoping that I can get a common factor with the 2x minus 1. So I'd like to have the x term and the constant term in the same order. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from the numerator. Now, inside parentheses, I have 16 x to the power of 4 minus 1. Now I recognize that as the difference of two squares, so I'll go ahead and factor 16 x to the power of 4 minus 1 as 4x squared plus 1 times 4x squared minus 1. And then I see that 4x squared minus 1 is also the difference of two squares. So I will factor that as 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And now I see that I do have a common factor of 2x minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. 
So after I simplified, I'm left with negative 1 eighth, 4x squared plus 1 times 2x plus 1. So now let's take, go back and take the limit. So what I've found is that the limit as x approaches 1 half of f of x minus f of 1 half all over x minus 1 half is the same as the limit as x approaches 1 half of negative 1 eighth times 4x squared plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Now, the simplified expression is continuous when x equals 1 half, so I can just use direct substitution and find that the value of the limit is negative 1 half. So we can say that the rate of change of y with respect to x at that point is negative one half. Now our numerical approximation was very close. Whether we approach from the left or from the right, we got a little bit off from negative one half. But we'd like to know the exact value. That was equivalent to finding the slope of a line knowing only one point and now we can answer that. You take the limit.